For nearly 20 years, journalist Jerry Mitchell dedicated his work to investigating murders committed by the KKK during the Civil Rights Movement. That work culminated in a new book called Race Against Time, and it gives readers perspective on a very terrible time in America's past, but it is also pretty appropriate for right now. Jerry joins me at this juncture. This book is so alive. Well, um, tell me a bit about why you are still investigating these cases and the application to the environment we see today. Well, I, I think history informs the present and the future as well, and, and history tends to go in cycles. So I think what you see here, this hate, if we, if we don't we don't kind of document it and realize where our past is. It, 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 unfortunately, we tend to repeat our, our history. And, and that's kind of what we see in, in the, over the past five years. We've seen this real rise in white nationalism, white uh, supremacy, and yeah. those kinds of things. And, and a denial of actual history. Yeah, and that, that's the disturbing part of that. So let's talk about the murders that yes. you investigate in this book, how you chose them, and what, sure. what you think we can learn from what you found out. Uh, well, I. And we have some photos here. You can. Oh, absolutely. Everybody. This is Megar Evers. Uh, he was killed by a guy by the name of Byron D. Beckwith in 1963, assassinated in his own driveway, and um, and so his murder basically he uh, the murder was tried but wasn't convicted, and it finally was convicted in 1994. It took that long. It took that long. And this is Vernon Damer. He was, uh, died defending his family from the Klan in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Uh, and so that was, in, and this is the four little girls, as we sometimes call them, the, the four girls that were killed in the Birmingham church bombing I in 1963. I think nobody forgets that. It, it's just horrible. And there was a picture of the, the church itself that bombed Lord. out. And, um, and so they're just, and, and then the uh, three civil rights workers that were killed. You know, in Mississippi. In Mississippi. So, 64. as you investigate cases like this, there's obviously still a lot of pushback from people who oh, are definitely. on the the I don't know how even to describe. Let's say white nationalists. Yeah. yeah. Um, what was it like to try to dig through this information and to make sure that it stays relevant? Well, I mean, I, I wanted to try to expose first of all, obviously, that justice wasn't done, and and you know that that involves digging into these cases, yeah. looking at them again, and it became pretty obvious. The thing that was so horrible about these cases, it was not just that these guys got away with murder, it was everybody knew they got away with murder. And, and that was the other thing that was very compelling to me. It made me angry uh, that these guys, you know, 20 Klansmen involved in killing these three young men, and nobody ever been prosecuted for murder. I just, I just couldn't wrap my head around it that. It is almost impossible to understand. Yeah. Explain to, you mm -hmm. know, people who weren't alive sure, then, sure. Or, or who may not know, um, what that time was like, why it was so easy for everybody to know what happened and nobody to do anything about it. Well, what was happening is everyone from the government on down was kind of complicit in some ways with this violence that was being carried up by the Klan and, and others. And so they, as, you know, had all white, all male juries, for example, for these these killers, and they just. They just walked away. The juries didn't convict. Typically, they would, maybe you'd get a hung jury if you were lucky, and there were almost no convictions in those days. And but this is uh, Sam Bowers. He was the one who, who uh, ordered the killing of Vernon Damer and also ordered the killings of the three young men, uh, James Cheney, Andy Goodman. And this is uh, Edgar Ray Killam. He was the one who kind of orchestrated those killings, the killings of Cheney, Goodman, and Schwerner. You know, I think. Th here and Byron Dillebeck was is the yeah. one who killed Meg Rivers. Uh, yeah. His name uh, lives in in infamy. And Bobby Cherry, who was the one who supposedly planted the bomb that killed the four girls. Is there no way at this point, knowing what we know, to seek some kind of justice that would permanently determine what happened? Yes, and in these cases, we 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 have had justice in the sense these people were convicted, but there, there's so much more that needs to be done right, right. In, in these cases and in other injustices in this country. I mean, that's part of the problem. The is, lynching era as exactly. well, right? Just uh, yeah. went on and oh, on. Yeah, and, and there were like 4,000, more than 4,000 African Americans who were, who were killed. As you were investigating this, I think there's, you know, the black community knows Yes, the they know a lot of these stories. Um, the white community often doesn't. Or Correct or thinks of it in some way that it's way in the past and not part of what we live Correct. with now. Correct. What is your 
best approach to kind of getting p people to wake up yeah. to the reality of, of what other communities live with and why that's so important to getting us to a place of justice. Well, you know, when I was in Dallas, there were the three different African Americans stood up and began to talk about their stories. And it made me realize we don't talk about race. There, we don't provide a safe place for people to begin to have conversations. And then a white woman stood up, and I get choked up just talking about it, but she talked about her grandfather, how doting her grandfather was. And then they found uh, his hood, his clan oh hood. So she was having to reconcile this grandfather she loved with knowing that he had been a member of the, of the KKK. And, and certainly the Northwest is no stranger to, uh, to white supremacy and hatred, uh, airy nations, and, and a lot of other groups up this way, unfortunately. So you've written a book that helps us open our eyes. What would you suggest to just everyday people like me as we go through life to make sure that these issues get the attention that they need and that we you know, support one another community to community? Well, I think what, what's happening right now, I sense out there, these politics of fear are at play. And what happens when, when fear reigns is people pull back into whatever their identity groups are, whether it's by race or party or whatever it is. And we've got to not let that reign. We, we have to move beyond fear so we can reach out to people across racial lines, across party lines, whatever those lines are, to begin to understand our common the things we have in common and work together, that's the only way that... Uh, and that I hope to respect other people's experience. Exactly. Because you haven't seen something or experienced exactly. it doesn't mean it's not real. Well, it's I, very real. I have a post on Facebook every day, to kind of today in civil rights history. And what's fascinating is so many people come back, white and black, and say, I never knew this. They never taught me this in school. So there's a real gap, I think, in, in knowing our past in this country, particularly when it comes to race. I'm so glad that you've written this book, and I hope you just keep right on writing well, so thank that we you. can learn thank and, you very much. and do better and be better. Absolutely. Much thank appreciated. You so much. Jerry holds an author event tonight at 7 p.m. at the Elliott Bay Book Company on Seattle's Capitol Hill. Hope you can join him. We'll have details on our website.